Since lesson 14, we've been writing basic code in the click event handlers of buttons and bit buttons. You learned that when you double click on a button in design time, Delphi automatically creates the button's click event handler. So far, we only coded the click event handlers of buttons and bit buttons, but in this lesson we are going to learn more about the structure of events. You will also learn about many other events for different components. By now, you should know that nothing can happen in Delphi if an event wasn't triggered. That is why we say that Delphi is an event-driven programming language. In other words, you can write buckets full of code for your program, but that code will never execute if it is not triggered to execute somehow. After you typed the code for the reset bit button in an earlier lesson, you had to run the application. But even after you ran the application, the code for the reset bit button didn't execute immediately. You first had to click the reset button to execute the code that was written in its click event handler. So, even if you write code to be executed when a button is clicked, that code will never run if you don't click on that button. All the events for all your components that you will use in Delphi has three parts. The first part is the interaction by your user or by you. The interaction is the physical action that you or your user will perform on a component. That can be something like clicking on a button, typing the text in an edit, changing the number in a spin edit, or moving the mouse over a component. These actions require you to perform some kind of work, sometimes using the mouse and sometimes using your keyboard. Some actions can happen unattended, in other words, in the background, without any intervention. Examples of unattended actions can be something like a download that starts automatically, or a print job that completed, or it can be a timer that counts down the seconds. In these lessons we will only focus on those events that require actions from the user. When a user performs an action on a component, like clicking on a button or selecting an item in a list box, he or she invokes an event for that component. For example, if the user clicks on a button, the onClick event of that button is triggered. This is the second part of an event. The onClick event tells the Delphi compiler that the user wants to execute code that you have written for that component. I mentioned before, but this is important, so I'll say it again. Even if a user clicks on a button, if the programmer did not write code for the button's onClick event, nothing will happen. You must write code somewhere for your component to respond to an event. You know by now that you must write code in the forms unit using the code editor, but you cannot just write code for an event in any random place in the forms unit. Every event that you write code for has its own special section in the code editor. Those sections are called event handlers. An event handler is the third part of an event. This is the three main parts that makes up an event. And this is the order or flow that all events will follow. Let's look at this in a different way to make sure that we understand the concept. Let's assume that you have a button called BTN Calculate. BTN Calculate will never do any calculation if the user doesn't perform an action on it. In this case, the user must place the mouse on the button and press the left mouse button to click on its surface. When clicking on the button's surface, the user triggers the button's on-click event. This tells the Delphi compiler to go and look which code instructions are linked to BTN Calculate's onClick event. The onClick event is linked to a block of code called an event handler. In this case, the event handler linked to the onClick event of BTN Calculate is a procedure named BTN Calculate Click. The instructions that a programmer typed between the begin and the end statements of the event handler will then be executed when BTN Calculate is clicked. All our Delphi components have default events. A component's default event is that event that is normally performed by that type of component. For example, there is an event that is triggered when you right-click on a button, and there is another event that is triggered when you move your mouse over a button, but that is not what we normally expect a user to do when he or she uses a button. We normally expect a user to click on a button. Therefore, the on-click event is the button's default event. The onclick event of a button called BTN Calculate is linked to an event handler called BTN Calculate Click. The bit button's default event is also onclick and it is also invoked when a user clicks on it. If you double click on a bit button called BMB Reset in Design Time, Delphi links the bit button's onclick event to an event handler called BMB Reset Click. The form's default event is onCreate and it is invoked when a form is loaded in memory. 
If you double click on a form in design time, Delphi links the forms on create event to an event handler called form create. A spin edit's default event is on change and it is invoked when a user changes the value displayed in the spin edit. If you double click on a spin edit called SEDH in design time, Delphi links the spin edits on change event to an event handler called SEDH change. A combo box default is also on change and it is invoked when a user changes the selected item to another item. If you double click on a combo box called CBO gender in design time, Delphi links the combo box on change event to an event handler called CBO gender change. These are just some of the components and their default events. You can go and experiment with more default events. Just add any component on a form and double click on it. After a while you will be familiar with a whole bunch of components and their default events. Most components can respond to more than one event. In this explanation I will use a button called BTN Calculate again. You already learned that the button has an on click event which is its default event. You also learned that the on click event is triggered by a user when the button is clicked. But you also learned that the on click event is linked to an event handler called BTN Calculate Click. BTN Calculate can also trigger additional events in response to a user's actions. For example, a user can also shift focus from another component to BTN Calculate. As soon as BTN Calculate receives focus, its on enter event will be triggered. The on enter event links to an event handler called BTN Calculate Enter. The user can also right click on BTN Calculate. This will trigger the on context pop-up event, which links to the event handler called BTN Calculate context pop-up. The user can also move his mouse pointer over BTN Calculate surface. This will trigger the on mouse move event, which links to an event handler called BTN Calculate mouse move. Here I only demonstrate some of the additional events that can be invoked for a button, but you can go and explore more of the other additional events. Now let's see how Delphi links an event with an event handler and how you can also use Delphi's IDE to identify where and how events and event handlers are linked. When you learned about the different features of Delphi's IDE way back in lesson 5, you learned that the integrated development environment has an object inspector. In the lessons after that we used the object inspector to set the properties of our components. You also learned that the object inspector not only provides a properties tab, but it also has an events tab. Here on the screen I show you a screenshot of the object inspector. This object inspector displays the characteristics of a button called BTN Calculate. Under the button's name you can see two tabs. One for the properties of BTN Calculate and one for the events of BTN Calculate. The events tab displays all the events that this button can respond to. In the cell next to the on click event you can see the word BTN Calculate Click. That indicates to us that this button can respond to the on click event. But it also tells us that the onClick event is linked to an event handler called BTN Calculate Click. So if you double click on BTN Calculate in design time, Delphi creates an event handler called BTN Calculate Click and link this event handler with the onClick event of this button. Let's have a closer look at the structure of the event handler that Delphi created for the onClick event of this button. The first line is called the procedure header or the procedure signature. This line starts with the word procedure, which is a keyword that the Delphi compiler uses to refer to a piece of executable code. Next to procedure is the name of the class. In this case the class is a form. This indicates to the compiler that the component that responds to the event belongs to a form called FRMH calculations. You will learn more about classes later in these lessons. After the class name is the name of the event handler that is linked to the onClick event. In this case the name is BTN Calculate Click and this name corresponds with the name in the cell next to the onClick event in the object inspector. So now we know that this event handler is linked to the onClick event of BTN Calculate. After the name between the brackets is an argument that reads sender as T object. This tells the event handler which object or component triggered the event. You will learn more about objects later. You will also learn that this event handler can be used by more than one component. In other words, it can be shared between different components. 
That is why it is necessary for the event handler to know which component triggered the event. By now, you should already know that the event handler has begin and end statements and that you must write your instructions between the begin and end statements. In this example, we only learned how a button's onClick event is linked to the event handler. Remember, the onClick event is the default event of the button. I explained earlier that a button also has additional events. In other words, it can respond to more than its default event. Let's explore that. Here, I show you the object inspector again. In the events tab of the object inspector, we now see that BTN Calculate doesn't respond only to the onClick event anymore. It also responds to the onContext pop-up event, the onEnter event, and the onMouseMove event. The names of the event handlers that must handle these events display in the cells next to each event's name. To tell Delphi to create a default event and event handler for this button, you had to double-click on the button in design time. But to tell Delphi now to also create additional events for this button, you simply double-click on the cell next to the event's name, and Delphi will create an event handler that will be linked to that event. In this case, I double-clicked on the cell next to the onContext pop-up event, and Delphi created the skeleton or event handler called BTN Calculate Context Pop-up. This event handler is now linked to the onContext pop-up event of BTN Calculate. Whenever a user right-clicks on the button in runtime, the code that I write between the begin and end statements will be executed. I also double-clicked on the cell next to the onEnter event and Delphi created the skeleton or event handler called BTN Calculate Enter. This event handler is now linked to the onEnter event of BTN Calculate. Whenever the focus is shift to this button in runtime, the code that I wrote between the begin and end statements will be executed. Finally, I also double-clicked on the cell next to the onMouseMove event and Delphi created the skeleton or event handler called BTN Calculate Mouse Move. This event handler is now linked to the onMouseMove event of BTN Calculate. Whenever a user moves his mouse pointer over the button in runtime, the code that I wrote between the begin and end statements will be executed. As you can see, Delphi does a lot of the thinking for us. It also writes a whole bunch of code for us. All we have to do is to know when our code must execute and then to add our instructions to complete the process. I know that we have already written code for events, but that was the code for the onclick events of buttons and bit buttons. In the next lesson, you will also write code for other components and events. See you back in lesson 22.